Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we are building some new science to complete um, the first scientific science satellite contracts. And there are actually plenty of these once you start going with them. So there's a lot of, of income to be had, which is very good for our f the future. Um, it seems like we'll never run out of satellite contracts for a long time at least. And here we are designing some new satellites, like I said, this one um, has a geiger muller counter, which is able to complete the first science satellite contract, which sort of unlocks a bunch of new ones. And it was, it, uh, I noticed it was able to become really, really shiny, and that was a coloring UI that I'm not exactly sure what mod that's from. I know that um, the RO tanks mod yeah just the ro tanks mod i've noticed uses that ui coloring gui and i actually realized um the fairings will as well so i decided to make that fairing nice and shiny i like the way it looked um sort of the fairing is encompassing a bunch of electric charge the probe core and the the um, geiger muller counter at the tip as well as an antenna sticking out the front and essentially this was going into a solar synchronous sort of close to solar synchronous at least orbit which is the reason why we launched at i think this is sunrise or possibly sunset i think it's sunrise though um you'll see here as we get higher up in the atmosphere the rocket turns red then yellow then white as uh the sun is slowly peeking over the horizon This satellite is going to be in a mostly circularized orbit, one with a very, very low eccentricity, uh, because the geiger muller counter requires an orbit which has extremely low eccentricity, or eccentricity, ah, however you pronounce that. Um, and there's a few things I learned with these science uh, satellites. It's that, well, in planning, I only planned on this running for about a few days before the electric charge actually drained because these early um these early solar panels aren't very powerful and they actually degrade very fast after about 10 days they're outputting at 80 percent and it goes down very very quickly from there um and pretty much at a hundred percent they're just barely able to um, counter if they have great sunlight um if they're pointing at the sun correctly they're only able to counter the science experiments at like 100%. So after a few days, the solar panels can't really keep up, the electric charge drains. But what I discovered is when the electric charge reaches zero, the solar panels are just powerful enough to, like a few times a second, just give a burst of electricity, kind of. You'll see later on in the video when I open the Kerbalism screen, that the connection is flashing between no connection and yes connection, like red and white, just constantly. And it seems like the electric charge is completely drained, but the solar panels are doing just enough to provide just enough power to at least transmit some science. So even if the electric charge drains, the solar panels, and this was unintended, actually keep the satellite working and alive and is actually able to produce science over time. Essentially the way these satellites work is, <laughs> well here you see um, I was getting rid of debris and the Kraken has took a few of them, made some of the debris a, a moon of Saturn. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how that happened. One of them was the moon it looked like, I'm not sure. It, it, was, it got a little bit weird. But anyways, what I was talking about is uh, these satellites collect science over time since the few experiments I have are dependent on low space biomes and each biome has its own amount of possible science and they'll remain in orbit indefinitely until there's no more possible science for their respective experiments in the biomes they're able to access. And the reason we went with solar synchronous orbits, or close to solar synchronous, is they will have the best opportunity to have constant sunlight, 
as well as they're going over the poles so they have the um, greatest possibility of getting all of the biomes. And you saw there for a second, um, I launched two of these by the way, but the f by the time the second one launched, the first one was no longer in a solar synchronous orbit and was just sort of in a polar orbit that was going perpendicular to the original orbit. So it was getting half sunlight, half darkness. So it'll be a little bit slower for that one. Half as slow, or not half as slow, twice as slow but it will still collect science nonetheless. So now there are two satellites of the Cosmic Sat variety with a nice shiny fairing. And they are the geiger muller counter, which was the first one that we saw, but the second one had a micrometeorite detector as well as a magnometer boom. So now we have three science experiments in LEO that are slowly, slowly collecting science for our program. And this is actually able to collect enough science for us to unlock another node at, I think it was 16 or 17 science. Um, and these will be one of the first, I think 1958 or something, orbital rocketry. It, it's another node in the orbital engines um, node. Tree. Tree was the word I was looking for. And it gives us a new engine as well as a plethora of new upgrades for engines we already have. So we will definitely be seeing those utilized next episode. The contract we're looking to complete with this new satellite is called the Malnia Orbit. There's been a few satellite relays in this type of orbit. I believe Russia has done one um, because it gives constant communication to the upper hemisphere of Earth to the surface, which could be very useful um, since maybe a geostationary satellite network won't reach as far north. Um, when this sort of satellite relay could give constant communication to the North Pole, for instance, if needed. But we're just doing it to fulfill the contract. And this uh, first iteration of SphereSat is rocking one science experiment on the top. Um, it's another one that's also running in LEO, the micrometeorite detector. Um, I'm putting another science experiment on here, not only to sort of speed it up, um, but also because I believe this orbit reaches high space above Earth for the first time. And so I'd like to get some science in high space as well as low space. You'll see here in just a little bit, I also mess around with the recoloring of this, um, make it all uh, flush, all the nice shiny metal look. And I actually really, really like the way that it turned out. I'm really happy with the way that this satellite, uh, this satellite turned out. The main tank right there is just full of ComSat payload and it gets but I couldn't find a better way of fitting it on the satellite other than making it like sort of the central structural piece. So that's what ended up happening. Another thing I wanted to test with this satellite is having a two-stage payload. And this is actually capable of impacting or flying past the moon and beyond it's able to leave Earth's sphere of influence. Though I don't really have any useful, well, use for that yet, so we won't be able to utilize that. But it's kind of cool that we have the capability of doing that if we want to. The RCS um, ports look a little bit strange for this one. I wanted the um, yaw and pitch to also um, have a little bit of four action as well. So simply just controlling yaw and pitch will help push the propellant into the, um, the Araby engine. I've done this before in, uh, I think, 131, and it turns out pretty all right. I, I also realized I needed some roll as well, so the other four ports are just controlling roll, Why the, the f first four that I had on there are yaw pitch and four controls. There's no aft since we don't really need that. Um, but here we are at the launch of SphereSat.
this being the fourth launch of the L4 rocket. The past three have seen absolutely no performance loss, no engine failures, I don't believe. Um, this L4 rocket is really turning into the powerhouse of our early career. There's nothing really that I can't see it being able to lift until we get to crew, but that's what we're gonna probably be adapting the L4 rocket into something that is able to carry crew. Currently some flaws with it I could see is circularizing right now, the thrust to weight ratio gets very, very high and that's not really crew rated. So once we have a crew going up into orbit, hopefully soon, we may need to design a new rocket. But for uncrewed launches, the Loner series is definitely king. Honesty, I knew when I first saw you Though one day you'd be holding my hand No twist of fate to separate you from me Now here we get our first look in the series of adding Maneuver Node with Principia which, if you haven't seen it before, probably looks really crazy, but there really, is, there really isn't a whole lot to it. Essentially, it's based off of whatever active engines you have, um, because as we all know, Impulse is not instant, and it takes about, well, in this case, a little over a minute, maybe two minutes, to actually perform the burn. So the change is not instantly from our old orbit to our new orbit, and this actually takes that into account quite nicely. Pretty much the way it works is you create a flight plan, um, plot out how long it will be, and it will um, pre predict your trajectory, and then you put in the delta V change at what time and using what engines, and it will tell you how your orbit will change. And I actually like this very much. I think it is actually pretty simple once you do it a few times. And if anyone wants N-Body physics in their game, I would definitely recommend grabbing Principia and learning its few quirks. pretty much inserted ourselves into the correct orbit. However, I did overshoot it by 10 minutes orbital um, period. But luckily we do have enough HTP to use our reaction control thrusters to simply burn retro until our orbital period lies within the parameters of the contract. We have everything else. We've got the ComSat payload. We have the inclination correct, the argument of periapsis correct. Um, it's just orbital period that is off. So after we wait for the contract to complete, we simply start the micrometeorite detector science um, experiment. And we will let this collect science over time just like th the uh, previous two satellites. So, as we unlock nodes and build rockets, we'll have a very slow accumulation of science, which will be great. We'll be able to unlock some science nodes pretty quickly. However, I am looking at um, more contracts that also give you science flat out right away. Um, that is definitely something I will also be looking to do very, very soon. Well, anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. 
and peace out. Winning.